Thank you, everyone, for coming to this uh, presentation. Kevin and I want to lead you through a workflow of capturing reality as it exists using laser scanning, then to add in three-dimensional conce conceptual models and produce exciting videos that will have your client say yes sooner. That is up to a point. We only have time to focus on pre-construction services, but there are a number of additional possibilities where laser scanning can be used throughout the build process. Capturing reality and moving into a virtual environment is one of the beginning processes of virtual design construction. It expands and encompasses BIM processes to enhance the conceptual front end of a building project through the development permit and public acceptance stages. With forethought, this work done up front enhances the BIM pro process once a project moves from concept into production. The workflow and our focus here is best considered in four stages. Capturing site data is collecting all of the existing dimensional data about the project as it exists. Post-processing is taking the data collected on site and getting it ready for visualization software. Visualization processing is the joining of collected data from site with virtual conceptual models into motion presentations to create the deliverable. Deliverables are those finished presentations prepared to wow your client, have them jump up and down and clap and say yes, and the project is yours and goes looking for their checkbook. <laughs> capturing site data. This is not capturing site data. I believe we can all agree that this room contains locked away, incomplete examples and suggestions. And don't ever rely upon those little fire escape plans uh, that are pinned up near exits uh, to start your project either. Today, the most efficient and effective method to collect dimensional site information is by laser scanning. Think of it this way. If you are creating virtual reality, capture reality virtually as it exists. In brief, laser scanning sends out a pulse beam that bounces back and is recorded as an XYZ point in space in real life. Real life is to scale. A fantastic set of videos that really explains this well have been created by National Geographic called the Time Scanners. Uh, you can find them online or on demand on PBS. Photogra photogrammetric solutions are getting better, but I find that their software solutions remain locked close and the imagery non-measurable. So, uh, writing a request for proposal and a specification is a topic all on its own, but remains very important. I have seen RFPs simply ask that the building be laser scanned. Don't do that. Like most successful plans in life, consider what end results are required and write out a plan of action. I have written a master format specification for laser scanning services with Keith Robinson of Construction Specifications Canada, and it is available later if you would uh, like it. Do a, site fa do a site visit first. Look for hazards and come up with your safety plan. Consider the degree of accuracy required for the project. Are registration targets necessary to obtain a particular accuracy? Or is a targetless registration process with lower accuracy acceptable? Registration targets need to stay fixed or secured in place. Targetless registration does not work on highly reflective glass surfaces, shiny marble or bright stainless steel. Angles of incidence to flat registration targets and surfaces are affected by available light and texture. Spheres on tripods do not work if someone bumps them on a, on a sidewalk or as what happened to us on one project while we were around a corner, a young preschool lad picked up one off the ground and wanted to, his mom to kick it back to him. We caught him. <laughs> 
Inside closets or washrooms, checkerboards or circle targets are often a better solution. Trick is, pre-planning promotes gathering a shopping list of goodies that need to be carried around on site for a successful scan. This will reduce crew time in the field setting up, where to start and where to go. What, what is the scope of work? Quite often the rush is to take three or four scans in a particular area with a couple of additional scans taken in between. With, uh, sorry, when a couple of additional scans taken in between will help tie areas together and give a larger set of information for further analysis and other areas of concern, such as rerouting pedestrians and, and traffic. Do not be f afraid to take extra scans. The cost of field scanning additional areas in one trip will certainly be less than gearing up to return for a second trip to capture an afterthought or to improve presentation. Consider the, if the exterior is to be captured today and the interior at a later date, then the first scope of work should include setting fixed reference points. Then tomorrow's scan data will coordinate with today's. The scope of work for laser scanning is not trade specific. Laser scanning will capture everything within line of sight regardless of who has to do the work. Laser scanning data can be used to accommodate a variety of related tasks. When used to determine floor flatness, then there cannot be piles of materials in the way. If you can't see the floor, you can't measure it. Pools of water and glass will scramble, reflect, and refract data. If the ceiling space is to be captured, then additional lighting needs to be brought along to brighten up the space. Laser scanning works in the dark, but only produces images in grayscales. For color, lighting is required, and color helps differentiate objects. The result of laser scanning are individual point clouds for each scan taken. This screenshot in scene software identifies each scan in different color. Here the scans are already registered. Looking at unregistered Unregistered scans is just a mumble jumble of colored dots placed on top of each other in a ball. It is confusing to look at and really totally useless when it's in that state. So ensure that your request includes registration and the degree of accuracy for registration. Registration has to be completed by the same team that does the field scanning. In this image, the rectangular flags represent the center point of each scan location. So you can see that by hopscotching the la laser scanner and reference targets in a de determined pattern around the building or from room to room inside a building will allow a complete capture of data for a project. This screenshot, again in scene software, identifies the registered and colorized, colorized points Colorized point cloud. I think that we can agree that this is quite simple to understand now, as opposed to the other one. Laser scanning does capture everything within line of sight and within range, regardless of trade scope definition. You can see overhead lines that are in the way of this project that are uh, not part of the project but will influence. Hopscotching the laser scanner and reference targets in a deter I said that around that will allow a complete capture of data of the project. Uh, please hold this image in your thought or in your mind. The post-processing stage involves getting all of the field scan points organized into one point cloud as shown in that last slide. There are a number of software programs that will complete registration and these are the more common ones. What is happening in this part of the software process is that groups of points that have commonality are retained as a group in free memory and then compared to all of the other scan files looking for that same group sequence. Once matching groups are found, the groups can then be identified as a feature. Really good software w will allow you to select the types of features that are being searched for 
as the common features between scans, common features such as spheres, checkerboard targets, or selected surfaces. When three or more common features are found, the geometry between the features is determined and compared between scan files as well. It is the repeated geometry that allows the software to register the scans by recalculated, recalculating each and every point into a common project coordinate system. In fact, this is only possible because each and every one of these points is stored as an XYZ coordinate. A radian azimuth altitude approach would create larger logarithms that would slow computing do time down even more. Still, we're glad it's the computers that are doing these calculations. Regardless of the software used for registration, the more speed and capacity your computer has, the less likely the software will crash. We are dealing with billions upon billions of points of data. We have found that minimum configurations recommended may work for smaller scanning projects uh, of between 20 and 25, but when you get over that many, the data starts to push computer computing limits. Um, our largest scan was 500 scans, and the file of the point cloud was 765 gigabytes. Using Task Manager, we often see all of our 24 gigabytes of RAM with eight core processing at 100% CP usage for hours at a time. Point is, Future Shop or London Drug do not have a computer that will handle this on sale or in stock. <laughs> the registration process will lead up bandwidth on, not on networks, so it's necessary to invest in a standalone computer with more horsepower to do this type of work. When is geodetic reference not important? It's an in, if an interior renovation project does not require any exterior work, then geodetic referencing is redundant. Plant sites typically have their own site layout grid that form location identification. Stick to the plant site layout system. Don't try to introduce a new one. Most building projects re will require both interior and exterior scans. If survey evidence exists, capture it in the laser scan and identify it in the point cloud after registration by setting a point marker. The point marker can then be set to a geodetic reference. Trying to get survey data to match point cloud data can and will become an issue. It is purely degrees of accuracy obtainable between the two processes. So be sure to review your processes with the legal survey team to gain consensus of where benchmarks are and what is being used. There are three reasons why it is necessary to leave laser scanning reference points. First, these points will prove provide a base to continue scanning the next day or into the interior through the doors that will allow registration of the exterior scans to correctly align with the interior scans. Second, these points can be accurately set into the point cloud to allow coordination of alignment between the point cloud and legal survey data. Thirdly, it's a resource point that surveyors can use to tie in real property reports. These can also be used in setting a benchmark and project survey point in Revit to again align models with point clouds. Save the, I clicked ahead too soon here, sorry. Save and identify the unedited registered scan files and work from copies. Editing the scan file and deleting all of the stray and inconsequential points of data from across the street will enhance modeling. However, in creating fly-throughs and motion presentations, point cloud backgrounds can help I create identity for the project. Kevin is now going to uh, take over and he's, he's the brains behind a lot of this, uh, this stuff. <laughs> Hello. All right, so I'm gonna go through the workflow of uh, bringing in our scan data 
to pre-visualization pre into Navisworks, and then uh, we're going to end up in Google Earth to see our building in its true environment. So uh, now that we have our, all of our uh, scan data, um, the, the specific, I'll talk about the scope of work for this project. Um, no, no data was available to the degree of accuracy needed to pre-visualize this building in its spot. So we went ahead and we uh, laser scanned the 35 acres here. So the, f the first step, because uh, we're ending up in, in Google, we're going to use their geodetic information to set our benchmark. Um, If, uh, you, if you have any survey data, you can actually just export that into scene uh, as a CSV file, and this will do this for you. If you do not have any of that information, this is uh, the workflow that we're going to do. So using the satellite view, we want to uh, find a point that we have in our point cloud. And we uh, select the right click and what's here, and that will give us an exact geodetic location of that point. Uh, we then want to copy that into Google Earth. Uh, we want to save that as a place marker in our MySpaces tab. And uh, uh, if you notice on the bottom left, or bottom right, there's uh, we'll have our elevation information, and uh, that's the elevation information that we'll use. Uh, Depoter states in his uh, paper, Horizontal Positional Accuracy of Google Earth's uh, High Resolution Imagery Archive uh, in 2008, that he found a um, control points which he derived from satellite imagery ended up with a root mean square error accuracy of 22.8 meters. And then three years later, S.C. Banker states in his paper, positional accuracy of the Google Earth terrain model derived from stratigraphic unconformities in the Big Bend region in Texas in 2011. He found a positional, horizontal positional accuracy of 2.64 uh, meters uh, root mean square error. So for placement on Google Earth, this is an, ex this is an acceptable range. Next step is to copy and place uh, the data given uh, from Google Earth and into, into scene. Sorry. So we visually select the exact same point. Uh, here we used a crosswalk, painted crosswalk that was easily uh, found on Google Earth and uh, we found the exact same crosswalk point, exact same spot, and uh, placed uh, that as our origin point. So we can copy and read the data that, that has uh, in, in Revit scene. And what we'll do is we will um, cal reverse calculate uh, the transformation data to be used to set that point into um, its specific GPS coordinate system. This, uh, once you apply the changes, will change all of the information within the point cloud. So uh, if you're using uh, interior scans and you want them to be referencing uh, with auto-extracted information that you might be pulling out later, uh, it's good to set an origin point to uh, 00, 0 elevation 1000, uh, just so that you have a known point in the point cloud for referencing later. All right, and uh, there's our geodetic information on Google Earth, and there's uh, the exact same point in the uh, scene. So now, yeah, I just have some notes on the specific slide. So here we want to create a duplicate copy of the point cloud. Um, in this point cloud, there is estimated uh, 14 billion points of data. So what we're going to do is 
We're going to colorize the point cloud and then export it. We're going to grab every uh, 30th row and column of data. This will give us a nice uh, manageable size. Sorry. Um, at this point, uh, before colorizing the, and re-exporting the project, the file size of this, uh, of this project was 198 gigabytes. After we've condensed the revisions and export it for accessibility, it is, uh, it's smaller down to uh, about 90 gigabytes. 90 gigabytes, yeah. So once we've exported it out at uh, every 30th row and column, we'll have a PTX file now the size of half a gigabyte of data. And this is what we're going to use. So we can now um, bring it into recap software so that we can index it and bring it into Autodesk products. Uh, after importing the PTX file and before indexing, make sure you set the filter scans uh, up at the top right to minimal. Uh, we've already filtered the scans through export, so uh, we don't need recap to do this again. We'll end up losing a lot of data that's uh, further at further ranges. So we can now index the scan. So here it is in recap. Uh, if we're happy with uh, the data he we have here, we can export this to an RCS file and have a nice uh, 100 megabyte uh, size file that will be running nice and smooth. This area here where the new building will be placed, uh, we can delete those points and export as an RCS for pre-visualization purposes in Navisworks later. If you have a lot of uh, point data to clean up, I would suggest exporting to recap, doing the most deletion there, and then if you need more accuracy, export as an E57 and bring it back into scene uh, for more clearing of data precisely. So uh, next, uh, quick note on the RCP and RCS files. RCP files, uh, they all ref reference all the RCS files that were indexed from the PTX file. You can link the RCP or RCS files to your Revit. Uh, if, you're, if you are editing your RCP file, um, be sure to use save as, so you're not over, overwriting your linked data already. Next, we're going to create a topo uh, auto-extracted from, uh, from the points. This is uh, done in clear edge edgewise. We'll just use the presets, auto extract. There's our point cloud, and there's our point cloud and our tin model. Now, because we set all of our origin data, uh, when we bring it into Revit and Navisworks later, it, everything will uh, line up wonderfully. So here we have uh, the Revit. And there we have our auto-extracted TIN model. And in Revit, when you have a TIN model, you also have a topo model. But a uh, quick point here is if you ever have point cloud clouds landing in outer space, it's generally because um, the project point has been moved. So because we set our origin point, we know exact reverse calculations at what point need to be made for this to land and uh, end up exactly where it needs to be again. So here's uh, Revit with a topo uh, extracted from that point cloud data and the point cloud there. So now we can uh, start design from here. If we already have our building, uh, we'll just place it. All right, now on to Navisworks. So now you can do all your fun uh, uh, 4D planning and pre-visualization. Uh, I like to make some movies uh, in here. You can save all your views, create an animation quite quickly. So what we'll do is um, the previous less dense point cloud, it worked wonderfully for pulling uh, an auto extraction tin model. 
but we'll take desired scans of the road leading to the new building and we'll export those as a higher density so that we can get more points in the trees and see exactly and clearly what's happening. So we can save those as uh, JPEGs, multiple JPEGs in frames, and in After Effects in Adobe Premiere, you can stitch that all together. It's quite, quite handy. And then we can, uh, we have a little movie driving down that existing road where the building is gonna be in that car park. <clears throat> so now uh, we've, seen our, we've seen our model in its really uh, close local area of, of 35 ac acres and what it's going to look like on campus. So we're going to bring it onto Google Earth to see it in its real environment. So we're going to grab that, uh, that same point that we had. We're going to export it as, uh, or save it as a KMZ file. In Navisworks, we'll, we want to go to the ribbon um, and the output, uh, the output tab going to the Google KML tab. There we can just import our KMZ uh, data, and then we want to pick the, sorry? We want to pick the exact same point that we were using as our origin point. And there we go. Right from Navisworks, we have uh, the topo model and uh, the pre-visualized uh, building on its site. Uh, if you notice, there's a rotational issue. Uh, as described by uh, the papers that I referenced earlier, this is, this is to be expected. So we can grab a second point, point uh, export that as a KMZ, re-import it into Navisworks, and correct that uh, rotational issue. All right. All right, yeah, okay, going back to here. Uh, so if you notice on this uh, last slide, uh, w we lost part of our topo uh, to the terrain model in Google Earth, and. So what I did is I uh, extracted from Google Earth data uh, the, the topographic information. Our, our topographic information is uh, highlighted in blue. Google Earth's is the mesh right there. So uh, what we found is that uh, the berm that was crucial to uh, pre-visualization pre pre in uh, planning the construction phases didn't even exist. Uh, access roads were placed at uh, a higher elevation, and the parking lot has a seven meter uh, change in elevation over 30 meters. <clears throat> so putting in Google, uh, we'll be able to see it in its entire environment without needing to scan the entire river valley. So here it is. You can adjust settings in Google Earth, uh, such as the, the weather, um, morning, what time. And then here's a view of what it's going to look like uh, facing the river valley, the building in this spot. And then here, uh, if you notice on the sidebar, uh, what we have is we have all view information saved in Navisworks uh, that you can view in Google Earth as well. And you also have all layer information, so you can, you can switch off layers uh, and uh, yeah, you have control of that in Google Earth. So uh, we went from having no data to an accurate topo map to design to pre-visualization to Google Earth and in the end, uh, in a KMZ file. This building and topo file is uh, one megabyte, and this slide presentation is 65 megabytes, just to give another comparison. Typically, the reason we are doing all of this type of presentation work is to clearly communicate our design and construction ideas. 
We're all responsible to someone who is making the investment in a building, regardless of the role that we play in a process. We all, we, we all want to get the client to say yes, and we equate that in business dollars. I believe that Kevin and I have succeeded in showing a practical solution to improving efficiency, increasing effectiveness, and being cost conscious, not only in marketing the front end of a building project, but the same workflows can be extended to demonstrate the construction of complex building components, project sequencing, and identifying site amenities, emergency routes, work limits, and potential safety hazards. I, I recommend extending the use of these processes right to the job shack where tradespeople are, can be engaged uh, to uh, view these processes as well. That is basically it, what we've got. Um, it's a, a tedious process, uh, but once it's mastered, the results and how you can use it in, in communication with your client, with tradespeople, uh, is phenomenal. By working in 3D, information becomes intuitive and <coughs> open, it, it, it's much easier to discuss how things will go together, how a project can, can come together. Thank you very much.